Hey, this is Mark Kendall from Great White, and you're listening to Rock at Night. Night. Hello everyone, this is Joel Barrios welcoming you one more time to the Rock at Night podcast series. Today I will have the pleasure to speak to the founding member of a band that has been around for a very long time, rocking us with their unique style. Great White has been captivating audiences for decades, and they are best known for their Grammy-nominated Best Hard Rock Performance hit, Once Beaten, Twice Chai, among some other excellent rock anthems. In their bag, they have 12 full-length albums, they have sold over 10 million albums around the world, 6 top 100 Billboard hits, 9 top 200 Billboard hits, 2 platinum albums, and clocked the top MTV video 4 times. Let's welcome Mark Kendall, lead guitar player of Great White. Mark, how are you today? How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing very well, Mark. Thanks for asking. And i got to say there is a real pleasure to be talking to you today. Thank you. I'm very familiar with Great White. I mean, I still remember back in the day, like having my cassette tape of Twice Shy and play it over and over and over. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you. Well, Mark, first and foremost, I wanted to say thank you on behalf of all the Rock and Nile listeners for taking the time to talk to me today. Glad to be here. You have been with Great White since the very beginning. Actually, I could say that this band is your baby. It's going to be like almost 40 years. I mean, I believe that next year will be like exactly 40 years since you said this emotion. And I'd like to know, how do you feel about the success the band had, the millions of records sold, and the actual history that you guys made? Well, um, yeah, I mean, you know, our very, at the very beginning, um, we weren't even called Great White until we met our, uh, who became our manager and A&R guy, um, saw us play in Hollywood, uh, we went down to the record company the following day, and he said he liked everything about the band except for our name. And my singer used to call me the Great White because I'm, <laughs> you know, when I would do a solo uh, because I'm so fair complected and everything. And he used to call me Great White when I do a solo. So the the manager and A and R person that we met had heard that, and he said when he said he didn't like the band name, we 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 were saying oh no we got to think of another name this is going to like take forever and he goes no i already have the name and he said great white and at first we didn't like it but then we thought about the shark image and everything and we thought it would be great and then um anyways in in 1982 we our very first thing we did was with michael wagner we did an ep with five songs um that got he got us on the on big radio, the biggest stations, KMET and KLOS in Los Angeles, were playing our song, On Your Knees, on the radio, and we really didn't have a record deal yet. It was just an independent label. So after that, we ended up um, getting, there was quite a buzz, and people were um, in the industry when we started getting that airplay. And so we went and talked to nine different major labels and ended up picking EMI. We went on tour with White Snake in Europe in 83, and then we went on tour with uh, Judas Priest uh, up through 84. And when we got home, we didn't sell very many records, not, a, not enough to get the record company excited. So they basically dropped us off the label. And we went a whole year with no record deal, but... Um, then we came out with Face the Day that we made on our own, um, you know, our own independent record. And that got airplay in Texas, Arizona, and Los Angeles. And that was enough to create more excitement and give us our second chance. And that was with Capitol Records. So um, 
you know, and then after that, the, the rest is history, as they say. You know, we started to sell millions of records and got a lot of fans, and they loved our music. And, you know, but it wasn't without um, a lot of uh, grinding, as they say. <laughs> you know, a lot of years in the clubs, a lot of, uh, you know, disappointments. And, and finally, you know, we got everything together and were able to do big tours and, you know, like I said, sell a lot of records. So it was a great feeling once we uh, broke through, you know. Wow, that's what I would call like summing up 40 years in a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. Now jumping back to the present, Ray White released Leishon in 2012 and it is still working on new material all the time. Do you find that the fans are wanting more and more of the new stuff in the set list? Or do you still stick to the classics? How do you guys balance that? Well, the way we usually do it is we never exclude any of the hit songs. We always have, you know, all the big songs in the set, but we move around other stuff, you know. And as far as new material, when we come out with new records, we never like bombard the audience with brand new songs. We usually play a couple, you know, like two maybe. And we just kind of intertwine those. And um, so that's the way we've always done it. When we come out with a new record, we'll, we'll play a couple new live ones, a, a couple new songs. And, um, you know, that's just the way we've always done it. We are getting ready to, uh, well, It's a few months off, but we've, we're scheduled to go in the studio with uh, the legendary producer, Michael Wagner, uh, January 3rd, 2017. So we've got a new record um, in the works. Uh, we have a documentary coming out that has a live show from Las Vegas attached to it called Metal Meltdown, um, being released by Rock Fuel Media. It's going to be on DVD and all that, and also um, be released on a network, um, you know, like a Showtime. I, I don't know if Showtime will be it, but it's going to be in between July and October. So um, when I get that date, I'll be able to let you know. Wow, you just share incredible news, and I'm pretty sure that great white diehard fans are going to be thrilled to know that there's a new album in the works. Mark, uh, you came from a very musical, talented family, and you started playing guitar as a kid. So having music in your DNA, who would you say were your musical influences aside from your family? Um, well, at the very beginning, um, it, it was a, a band that played in the garage across the street from me. That's what inspired me to to really start uh, checking stuff out as far as music. But my very early influences were the Rolling Stones, you know, the Beatles. Um, I was, uh, my very first records that I ever owned at nine years old, my dad got me uh, Cream, um, Jimi Hendrix, and The Doors. And those were my first three albums that I used to listen to over and over. And as I got older, you know, into my teenage years and stuff, I went to Santana, you know, um, I, I just seemed to, as I discovered, uh, guitar players, you know, they would be my hero. And then I would, you know, find another one that was great. You know, Johnny Winter, uh, Billy Gibbons, when I was, uh, you know, 15 or 16, I was into ZZ Top and stuff. I listened to, uh, Deep Purple, you know, just um, most of the guitar players had kind of a blues overtones to their playing. They played with a lot of a uh, lot of passion, a lot of feeling. You just mentioned a really ample palette of musical background and many, many really revealing names of guitar players that you learn from. Mm -hmm. So considering that. Do you think that you have evolved and changed as a musician in the last few years? Um, you know, uh, the only thing that's maybe slightly different is I get the same results without putting massive amounts of energy into it. <laughs> you know, 
I, I, you know, you learn how to uh, refine your energy just from the, uh, from the learning process, you know? And, um, but I still, my thinking, the way I kind of am is I still like to, you know, to get in a room and jam with people. You know, I don't like to email my parts or, you know, use any of the modern technology for music really, as far as, uh, you know, when we're writing, you know, I, I'll get an idea with my acoustic guitar and I'll just throw it down on the phone so I don't forget it. You know what I mean? I totally get it. You're basically saying that you're the same Mark and all, just wiser. <laughs> I'm exactly. I mean, nothing has changed for me as far as, um, the, the the way I am and, and the way I come up with ideas and the way I save my ideas. Um, we still get in a room together. We still play together. And if it sounds good to us, it is good. You know, it, we don't go by what the computer tells us or like if something doesn't look perfect on the computer, we don't go by that. We go by our ears, you know, so in that way, we're still old school. Um, you know, I've heard it said many times that the imperfections in music is what gives it its personality. And so that's the way we still are. You know, we don't want to sound like a machine, you know, so. You know, Mark, music is made by humans and we are far from being perfect. And it's exactly that sort of imperfection what makes music so special. Absolutely, yeah. Looking back at so many years and so wonderful memories with Grey White, is there something that you would change during your life in the band? Is there something that now if you had the power you could do in a different way? Um, God, nothing I could really think of. I mean, we took... We did take a break away from uh, everybody went off to do their own thing. So I got a chance to do that in early 2000. Everybody did solo projects and whatever. Um, so I couldn't really change that. Um, shoot. You know, it just, it, it is tough because everything that that's bad that has ever happened to us, it made us better. You know what I mean? Well, someone said that experience is the name that we give to our mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. It made us grow and, it, and, you know, you learn from mistakes and, you know, if you didn't make those mistakes, you'd have nothing left to learn from. So there, there's really not a lot I would change. Um, the only thing I would maybe change um, is I would have probably, because I was quite a beer drinker and I used to, you know, I'd get pain from that and stuff. And, uh, eventually, and I wish I would have quit, uh, alcohol, like w as a younger man, you know what I mean? It didn't really affect my playing so much except for possibly live a few times, but it, I, I just, I love the sober life, you know what I mean? And so, so I wish I would have had this earlier, you know, but you know, like I said, you learn from your mistakes and... <laughs> Aside from being sober, how do you stay healthy on the road with such weird hours, with all the touring and all the things that come with it? Well, you know, we try to eat the best we can. I mean, at home, it's, you know, I, I drink a couple shakes during the day, you know, and, and have a balanced meal. Um, it's a little more difficult on the road, but for the most part, we can find, you know, we can get a chicken salad or whatever, you know, um, we do try to treat ourselves well in that way, but sometimes you got to go for a burger, you know, but, um, as far as hardcore touring, it was a lot more difficult, but uh, the past, you know, few years, we've been doing mostly fly dates where we fly in, do two or three shows. And then we'll either fly to another, do two or three other shows, or maybe even go home for a couple of days. So we're not out on a bus right now, um, you know, disappearing on the road for like two years at a time or anything like we used to. So it makes it a little easier. This is the kind of question that most of the time musicians hate. But I got to ask, if you look at your entire catalog, 
which one would you say that is your favorite album? And I'm not referring to the most successful album, just a matter of simple preference. What would be the one that you would take with you to a desert island? Well, I think when it all came together and all our influences uh, really showed through was on Once Bitten, the album that had Rock Me on it. Um, all my blues influences came out it, with my writing and, you know, and every, everyone in the band's influences came out and it just seemed to all come together. You know, um, the more you write songs, the better you become at it. And, you know, eventually, you know, um, things all, all your stars line up, you know, and, and it just, it works out. But that's where I really felt like, you know, I hear Santana there. I'm, I'm hearing a little Billy Gibbons. I'm, you know what I mean? It's like all my influences just rolled into one and, um, you know, just for playing for so many years. And I got the blue, you know, when you hear our band, it's funny because you, you go, well, I hear the blues, but there's like, it rocks. And then, it, you know, and then you go, but there's keyboards, you know, well, our keyboard players influenced by people like Billy Joel, Elton John, you know, our drummer is into like, you know, the real heavy music, you know, so you got all these different influences and when we all play together, it makes a certain sound. Um, as younger writers, we didn't really have our direction was a little confused and, you know, we were, you know, everything was new to us and we were just making up songs, you know, but as we played more together and started to develop the band, um, I, I feel like that album is the one that, that where everything kind of came together. Twice Shy, the follow-up record did sell uh, like, you know, right near 3 million, but you know, that doesn't always have to mean that it's my favorite record, <laughs> you know, even though it's a, re it's a really good record. Um, but there was just something about Rock Me coming together and everything, that moment in time was uh, special. If you were given the choice right now to pick up a band that you would like to share the stage with, what band would it be? Well, you know, we pretty much played with all our heroes o over the years as far as uh, really big bands like, you know, Scorpions, uh, Judas Priest, uh, you, you know, just goes on and on. But there is a band that we've never played with, and I don't even know if they have an opening act. I, I, I would think they do, but uh, if we had to be in an opening act position... Um, We've never played with ACDC, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty trippy because um, all our friends' bands have played with them at one point, um, you know, so that would be kind of neat if we could play with them. Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, we, there's not too many bands we haven't played with at some point. Well, we learned from a lot of the bands uh, like Scorpions and Judas Priest. I mean, they taught us a lot, you know. Um, they really took us under their wing as a young band and, you know, mostly taught us how to treat people, which was uh, something that we can, you know, use ourselves and treat our opening acts really well. And, you know, their attitude was they wanted the whole night to be great, you know, and that's the way we, we took that. And like I said, when we had opening acts, we would treat them really well too, you know. And so, you know, as far as just naming one band, uh, it, that'd be difficult because we played with so many and learned a little something from everyone. Mark, you know, many guitarists at some point in their careers release a solo album, sometimes of music totally unrelated to their original band. Is that something that you have thought about or made plans for in the near future? Yeah, I think I will, but I'm I'm having a lot of fun in Great White right now, and especially there's nothing I can't do in Great White that I would do on my solo album except sing. That's the only thing I do that's different about my solo albums is I sing on the record. But as, as far as uh, the songs I write, the way I play and everything, I do everything that I need to do in Great White, so there's really no rush for me to go off and, and do a solo thing, but I, I would like to do it. And that's what I wanted to do in the early 2000 was 
I'd always wondered what it would sound like if I sang on a record, am I, you know, writing my own music. And, um, so I, I got to enjoy that, but, um, right now, like I said, and, you know, we're really looking forward to making our next record and I'm really hoping that it, it comes out, you know, just amazing. I, I'm really excited. So basically you're saying that Great White is a music collective that allows you to express yourself as a musician exactly in the way that you want. Yeah, that that's the, really the reason I don't have a bunch of solo albums is because I can do every, Great White is a solo album for me. I mean, everything we do is what I want to do. <laughs> you know now let's go back in time one more time your very first guitar do you still have it i don't but i wish i did um what happened was um when i was about seven i had my very first electric guitar up until i was about 16 years old and then i ended up i got a, a real my first real guitar which was a a, a telecaster Fender. And when I got that, a friend of mine played guitar, but he didn't really have a, a, a playable guitar. He just had a crummy little acoustic. So I sold him my guitar for $5. Oh, God. Yeah, I could kill myself now, but um, it was called a K guitar. It, um, K-A-Y. And actually, my very first acoustic guitar that my dad got me was also a K guitar and so yeah I I had it all painted up with fluorescent paint and stickers all over it and everything you know but that would have been good to still own that but when you're 16 you know you don't really know good things are going to happen for you <laughs> and, and, and anything you own is going to be worth something someday you know what I mean I was just helping out a buddy of mine, you know, that's what my thinking was. Wow, that's really a piece of history there. Five bucks, come on, who would have said that? Five bucks for my first guitar, yeah, that would have been good. You guys recruited Scott Snyder in 2008 and Terry was brought to the fall in 2010. With this current lineup, do you feel that Greg White is as solid as a band as it ever was? Yeah, it, it's better than ever and, um, you know, Terry lends a lot to the band. He's a, he's a songwriter. He uh, comes up with ideas. Our last album, we basically went into the studio with no material whatsoever, except for two ideas. And we were able to do a whole album like on the fly. We're going to do it differently this time. We're, we're going in a lot more prepared. But um, yeah, he, he um, in the past, I pretty much did all the melodies and and would do it that way but with terry i can just hand him music and he comes back with a song which makes it um a lot of fun to to uh to do it that way um he has all his vocal range he treats himself really good he's a martial artist he's a great singer he's really consistent every night and um I am looking way forward to the next album. So it would be completely safe for me to say that you guys are very lucky of having Terry with you. Yeah, it's exciting. I, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Let me take you now in a very hypothetical scenario. It's 30 seconds before the lights dim and Great White is about to hit the first note of the night. What's going on in your mind? Um, well, um, before every show, and I've been doing this for years, I just pray, you know, that I can be. Uh, play my very best guitar and you know just have confidence and and you know play my heart out and be impressive and do a great show um i'm a little tiny bit nervous at the very beginning but it's more like a, a nervous energy as opposed to being scared to death or something <laughs> but uh you know what i mean but uh, you know, I don't know. I, I just get a little bit nervous before every show. Um, but once you know we get going, then I'm I'm feeling good. But I always pray that um, you know that we we can impress people and play our very best and give them their money's worth. Um, the way I feel, I I really don't. You know, I'm not thinking about anything. It's weird. It's like I'm just in this void space in my head where I, I'm not really thinking about a lot. I just, you know, more about the moment, just getting ready on the side of the stage, re ready to dive out there and start going. 
slightly nervous at the beginning and from the moment forward the night is all yours yeah that's what that's basically it you know it's more like nervous energy um but i don't really overthink anything i just i keep everything simple in my head and just you know don't really think a lot i just go out there and go um but i can feel it uh the you know the energy in my body i can feel it before right before i play i got a last one question for you other than working in the upcoming album of which you just shared details with us what else do you ambition for great white in the future um well uh well besides the new album you know we have this documentary which i'm i'm pretty excited about that um i'll go into the future but i just wanted to mention that because we were actually able to, these guys followed us around for a couple months with cameras and we were able to tell our story from the very, very beginning and, um, up until now. So I think that's going to be great for the fans. You know, I know I always like to know what's going on with all my heroes behind the stage and how they got their start and all that. So I think that's going to be great to share with the fans. Um, as far as our future, um, we're just going to go as long as we can until, you know, because we, we always, what key, what, why the band's even been around this long is because we keep making new music and that's what keeps us excited. You know, we're, we're not an oldies band that's just going to go out and play once a bit, twice shy, once a year, and you know, call it a day. We're constantly writing songs. We're constantly trying to come up with our greatest song ever. You know, so that's our incentive is is we haven't come out with the, that one song or that one album that's going to, you know, just be our pinnacle ever, you know, and I and I have a, that dream and that's what keeps my energy up and keeps me going is because I know I can always get better. <laughs> Reality is, Mark, that I couldn't be praising you guys high enough. I mean, you still have it in you. You're still out there four decades later, still going strong, still making music and trying to please the fans. And that is something really, really wonderful that speaks very highly about you as musicians, as, as also human beings. Yeah. And their fans are amazing. I, you know, they still show up. They, uh, you know, they have stories for us about, you know, something to do with a song maybe or, or whatever. And, they, you know, it's great to be a part of all that. Well, Mark, once again, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. It has been really great to ask these questions. And I am very much looking forward to your show this Saturday at Plum Hunter Beach. I will be there. Thank you, Joel. I look forward to meeting you. I'm also very much looking forward to meet you, Mark, you and the entire band. And maybe we can hang out a little bit after the show. Okay. We'll see you there.